this is Cal Cat the Cal Catster, and and, uh, and it is New Year's Eve, and uh, this is the Clara Awards nominees thingy, which we already kind of did for the other thing. Um, yeah, so so yeah, there there are a couple movies that were liked this year, and just <laughs> out of a hat, what are the you know what was the best picture of the year? To start off with and all that stuff. Uh, yeah. Um, ha uh, having added to the list Godzilla Minus One as best foreign film of the year. Um, <laughs> that, that changes things. Uh, having added that. Um, <laughs> which is, well, we finally saw that. Saw two other movies uh, over the past week. And, uh, including Aquaman 2. And, and, uh, and the heavily edited down uh, uh, Rebel Moon. It is the edited version, but I can't imagine the unedited version that has an hour more is any better, except that, ooh, it probably is more violent and more like Watchmen, apparently. Uh, some people have seen it, uh, and they say, yeah, it's just more violent, and it, it's cooler somehow. It's like, no, it's probably not. I'll, I'll probably review it, but I don't really want to, honestly. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, best, best cartoons were Across the Spider-Verse and Mar Super Mario Brothers. Um, yeah, uh, Oppenheimer, best drama, you know, that kind of thing. As you would expect, it, it's fairly straightforward. What would be that, that, you know? Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so, um, I guess best, uh, feel-good movie, uh, yeah, there's, there's, hold on. Although, uh, although Puss in Boots 2 is excellent, it is a sequel. It's a sequel, so... I'm not really gonna give it the best cartoon. I think uh, uh, Across the Spider Verse is better than that movie. Mario Brothers is better than that movie. Um, so for animated, I think it's probably gonna be the Mario Brothers movie. Because, yeah, Across the Spider, or is it? Well, you almost have a different kinds of animation styles going on there. You almost have a different kind of movie, really. Mario Brothers is more of a more of a, the style is more video gamey, silly, sort of flying around kind of thing. Whereas, uh, whereas uh, the Spider Verse is more that cut and paste paint sort of, sort of, uh, it's a style, uh, a line draw style that's different. Uh, yeah, yeah, which is the trouble with a lot of Oscar movies is you can't rate a movie based on its, its uh, just, oh, this is a style they're using kind of thing. You kind of can't do that. Uh, yeah, so so what is Barbie? Is it best comedy? Probably, um, just because Barbie, uh, yeah, Barbie, best comedy. Um, yeah, I'm not sure it really is a Clara Awards, though, thing. It's kind of a, a non-sequitur, just because really, how do you rate that with the, uh, the you know, the, the, the company going under and all that? You kind of can't. Um, it's not an official Clara Awards because there isn't officially any more Clara Awards. So, yeah. So, yeah. So, so you do you rate a sequel based on, uh, you know, do you say Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 is the best Marvel movie of the year? Probably, really, because other other Marvel movies this year were not so great. I'm not going to go into the details as to why they weren't so great. But even to quote uh, someone off the internet, Saying that the, the you know the the worst Marvel movie is is on a par with the best you know or was that the other way around the the best DC movie is is similar to the worst Marvel movie so so the Marvel movies are so much better on a, a different level than the DC movies that that really they they're 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 Marvel's worst is is DC's best so even the Eternals which is awful. And, and I saw that thing again, parts of it, somebody, long review of it. I said, yeah, this is really bad. Which is weird, because it was an Oscar winning critic from last year. Uh, yeah, this movie's really bad. Um, yeah, um, <laughs> and if we were shills for Marvel and Disney, we would not be saying that. <laughs> Clearly we're not. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy 3 is hard to watch, though. There are parts of this where they, they do, like, the scenes where Rocket is being raised in this evil torture place and everything, and... That's hard to watch. It is granted it's hard to watch, even if it's animated. Um, but yeah, um, so it's not for everybody. Uh, crowd pleasing wise, yeah. What is your what is your best pick? Uh, is it Mission Impossible Seven? Because it certainly isn't Fast and the Furious Ten. 
uh, which was okay, but really, really stupid. Um, yeah, you've got you've got some real stinkers this year, amazing stinkers. You've got people at YMS. Your movie sucks. Already rated uh, as, as awful. Uh, you've got that Little Mermaid remake, which was like, oh my, no. Even though, honestly, when I reviewed this movie, I it, I was so against in the action that I didn't realize the Under the Sea song, my favorite song in the whole in, in that franchise, Under the Sea song, didn't even use the animal critters doing anything. I, I just heard the song and the lyrics and went along with it and sung to it and didn't realize that the second viewing, the YMS viewing, uh, that, that I saw as well, that, oh shit, they didn't show the little critters doing their little musical instruments. I just... just I was just caught in the moment and didn't realize that they didn't film that. They just had her dancing around and little things dancing around next to her. It's like, wow, they really cheaped out on that scene. They kind of ruined it. Um, <laughs> you know, um, affected by other internet influencers. Oh, no. Um, but, yeah, they, they did not do that right. And, yeah, there were, there were scenes that were embarrassing in that movie. Uh, it did, yeah. It, I mean, is it on a par with Aquaman 2? Now, now, I was going to say it was The Little Mermaid that's worst picture of the year that I saw. I didn't see all the worst pictures, but I was going to say it was Little Mermaid, 2023. Uh, being my favorite animated movie. And, that, and The Lion King and Aladdin, you know, in that order. Um, but, uh, but, uh, but, but, yeah, the um, Beauty and the Beast is four. Uh, but, but, yeah, even the live-action Beauty and the Beast, I didn't mind. The live-action Aladdin, I had problems with. I said, some of this is off. It's just not quite right. The live-action Cinderella was fine. The live-action Beauty and the Beast had its moments. Some of it was a little off. And by their own admission in the live-action Beauty and the Beast, uh, yeah, they were like, okay, yeah. Even even um, the lead, who was uh, the, 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 the awesome uh, uh, Harry Potter girl. <laughs> even she admitted, uh, well, yeah, the, uh, I, I, I don't know why they hired me to sing in this movie because I can't sing like the original lady at all. Uh, I can sing, but not like that original person. Not, not, no. not even close. Uh, I don't know why they didn't do that. I'd say, oh, well, yeah. And in and, and the Little Mermaid movie was like, okay, well, they, well, she's, you know, um, <laughs> mermaid. But yes, um, but, but the, uh, the, uh, the girl they got in that one, she can sing. That was, that was fine. The problem with that was they got Aquafina to sing as a seagull. And that just threw you completely out of the story. I didn't hate the scene. I just thought it was kind of weird. Uh, but if she's playing Scuttle, then fine, it worked. But but they got Prince Eric, the guy playing Prince Eric to sing, and it was like, oh my, why did they do that? That guy cannot carry a tune. He should not be in sync musical theater. Put him playing an instrument or doing something else. But no, no, don't have him sing. Um, so, but then I saw Aquaman too. And I was all, wow, okay, wow, oh. So that thing, best of the worst kind of deal, <laughs> where they say that a movie um, is uh, a movie, uh, the, the, the best DC movie is the worst Marvel movie or whatnot, or the, or the worst of the Marvel movies is on a par with the best of the DC movies. The best of the DC movies was Aquaman 1. That was the best of the DC movies. And by their own admission, when they were making that, by their own admission, um, they, the reason that that movie worked is they exactly copied the Marvel formula. The director even says, oh, I'm going to copy the Marvel formula, three-act play, villain, stock villain kind of thing. Ooh, there you know, it looked like uh, one of my nephews, David, uh, doing doing evil things. And, and, and it worked. It was like, basically, they were all like, hey, I'm going to do the, I'm going to do the, uh, the, the paint by numbers Aquaman movie. Uh, the sequel has moments where it works, where the, some of the visuals look nice, but there's too many moments where it doesn't look nice. And it's not Amber Heard. She did not ruin that movie at all. She's in it for a total of maybe 19 minutes, and half of that is CGI, if not more than half of it. Uh, I would say she actually has five and a half minutes of dialogue, if that, and the dialogue could be easily auto-tuned out. <laughs> so no, she did not ruin the movie. She wasn't even barely in it. They could have cut her out entirely. They could have said Aquaman's wife was killed, and it, it really wouldn't have mattered at all. And I'm not into that into the either either thing. Amber don't care either way. I know they were both you know 
Never heard of the other guy work. Uh, but yeah, um, yeah, Aquaman, yeah, Aquaman two. You've won worst of the year as far as the ones I've seen. <laughs> there you go. Um, over the mermaid one. That was uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, let's see. Yeah. Also in. Um, so yeah, how can you say that? Oh, the Flash was worse. I I kind of liked parts of the Flash. So. It's bad, but it's not... Yeah, the ending was awful, but... Not the whole movie, per se, but... Like, that was, whereas the Aquaman 2 was like... Do we really need the baby stuff and, and him acting... Jason Momoa acting alongside a baby? Do we do we really need that? We did not. You could have... Like, that could have been gone, too. It didn't need that. Of course, the villain's going to... You know, try to tr capture the baby, of course... And uh, yeah, and it's not going to hurt the baby at all. In fact, someone in the theater <laughs> kind of under my breath, like, uh, commented, like, they're not going to kill the baby. The guy got up and moved. I was like, I don't, I, I told him, I, was like, I don't know whether they're going to do that or not. I'm just saying it's a Disney, it's a DC movie. They're not killing children in that. That's all I was saying. They're not going to do that. They didn't. <laughs> but, but yeah, they're not doing that. Um, so. Yeah, also, also this year we give an honorable mention to to uh, three Queen Bee Studios productions that were uh, produced. Uh, there, there, there was a science fiction adventure thing, Robotech meets the Transformers, the Sentinel Saga. We did the Sentinel Saga. We went back and did the Sentinel Saga as a uh, using the alt Transformers much lexicon stories as a Robotech meets the Transformers stories, and they and the Autobot ones became the uh, Masters. And the Decepticon ones became the Invid, and Rick Hunter and crew from the other timeline that was created as a space bridge went to the Sentinels universe. And had some fun there, uh, and it works. It works as a standalone Robotech spinoff story. You can take it for what it is, and it works. That's a great three-part miniseries. Also, we had Star Trek Locations Destinations, the final season of Star Trek Locations: The Chimera Saga. Uh, it wraps it up. It's uh, it says that it's the final, fifth and final year of the five-year mission of Ezri Lacarno and uh, Ezri Dax, Lord Lacarno, and uh, and it is because the first season began in uh, 2401 and it ends in 2405, and that was the first season started in the middle of her second year, five-year mission, it's in the second year, she had the ship for a year, um, so that so works, um, yeah, right after, right around the time of Star Trek. Star Trek Picard, the whole series of Star Trek Picard. It all fits. It all works. It's awesome. Uh, the third thing we did was uh, was a another mega miniseries uh, dealing with a Blessings Deferred, the Crime and App novel. And that's it. There's your thing. Okay, this is Calcat, the Calcatster. Welcome to the uh, series finale of the Calcat Show. Uh, after after 15 years, eight of years, eight years of which was not. Um, can with anything, uh, it has been canceled. The uh, the on location cats channel is canceled. The, uh, the the whole thing's out of business. The writer strike, director strike, killed it. Um, <laughs> uh, but, but yeah, um, although the last eight years has been mostly uh, other stuff. I, I was uh, this is a second take because the camera was not recording. Uh, the, the reason we're recording this two hours earlier than we usually record it is because there is a slim chance that uh, my, uh, nep my nephew was in the Navy, will come back with his friend, and uh, maybe be noisy. I doubt it. They're not going to hang out with their uncle at New Year's Eve. They're, they're going to be gone all evening, but just in case. So, anyway. Yeah, and I'm, and I'm sure that my sister will then... Um, Want to watch you know, to determine whether it did say anything embarrassing, but no, not about that. I'm not saying anything about that. Nor am I going to keep tabs on anybody. Cause I don't care <laughs> what they're up to. Um, so here we are. Um, yeah, on, on the set, on the Star Crackers set, the, uh, the former on location KATS cats set, uh, a site of all of Brown Productions movies and everything like that. Um, hmm, yeah, yeah, Star Crackers, all that, um, yeah, great to be back on the, on the set. 
<laughs> so, yeah. Um, uh, so here we are. And we find the lack of cheer disturbing. Yeah, the other shirt, uh, cat shirt is, is interesting. Um, so we have, um, yeah, I'm going to check this to see if it, it has been recording this time. That, that's good. Um, yeah. Well, Mark's cards last third, a couple of days ago on Thursday, I mentioned a year interview, goofy shit that's happened. Uh, really, there isn't much, though. I went back and watched some of the most recent updates and things on the channel. Of course, you're going to get your uh, pseudo Clara words thing at the beginning that I recorded earlier, uh, which really doesn't say much of anything. It's just, it's just, here's the movies I liked. You know, it's not really technically a Clara words at all. It was canceled too, at least a year ago. Um, and uh, yeah, so yeah, because it isn't really an award show. It's really not fair to say that it was when it never gave any awards to the actual movies. It was more like. Yeah, it was more akin to Stone Gremlins when they would do, oh, best movies of the year, worst movies of the year, in my opinion. It's more like that. It shouldn't have been called an award show. And the fact that it is, it is and it's in the history books, is a little goofy because it's not really an award show at all. Um, hmm, yeah. And, yeah, there, there were, you know, good and bad ones, and there was, you know, it was all fine um yeah uh, so yeah the things that sucked in the year 2023 including my uh, mother going to roseville the, the dementia facility she's still there we just visited her um because uh, she's yeah she's kind of out of it lost her marbles um so that that's the last person brown productions person executive producer so technically yeah yeah, there's no more money to keep doing the shows, <laughs> um, or the vlogs, or the animations, or all that stuff. Uh, yeah, without that, because I, I seriously doubt that that uh, my sister would continue doing that. Uh, being a, yeah, uh, I'm the now I now I'm the executive producer of of the of the YouTube shows, and because uh, yeah, no one else no one else would do it. It is interesting that. I don't have much of a social media presence beyond YouTube, but I have like three or four YouTube channels, and I don't go on Facebook hardly at all. I don't have an Instagram. I don't have a Twitter. I do not want to ever have a Twitter. I, I don't want anything to do with X Twitter. Oh, that changed. Yeah, Twitter changed in 2023 to X. It's like nobody wants to call it that. That's just a, and and ooh, Elon Musk a genius. Ah, oh, there's plenty of stuff on that says that Elon Musk is not a genius. Uh, he he paid double the price of that that thing that uh, Twitter forty four billion. No one worth that. It was like twenty billion. No one nearly worth that. He got ripped off. Uh, so yeah, genius. Yes, he is not autistic. He might claim he is, but all of it points to a narcissistic personality. All of it points to obsessive compulsive disorder, not autism. It's it's quite different. It has similar symptoms. Similar results, but it's not the same. Uh, probably Oppenheimer was probably more OCD than he was autistic. You know, something like that. Because he, he was driven. He was obsessive. He was driven. Now, that's, not, not, that's not quite, you know. Like when I said in my Oppenheimer review, I was like, well, he's not technically a nerd. Let's say Einstein wasn't technically a nerd either. If you're actually a really super smart math guy, you're not technically a nerd. You're actually a smart guy. Yeah, my father, my late father, he was a smart guy. Yeah, it's like, you know, it's like, no, he wasn't a nerd because, no, he could actually figure things out. Well, like engineering and stuff. He could figure things out. World War II, veteran and all. Um, yeah, so, yeah, so, yeah, he wasn't a nerd. Not at all. No, a nerd, some that can't quite figure things out. Mmm, socially awkward guy doing a, a blog. Uh, <laughs> you know, um... Yeah, so, um, yeah, so it's the other thing. Yeah, um, it's recently uh, I've had, uh, most of the family in the cast is, most of them are like center to right, right wingers family. I'm not. I tend to be fiscally conservative, but, uh, but story wise, uh, uh, 
what was it, uh, woke-wise, <laughs> um, uh, story-wise, LGBT-friendly, uh, uh, that kind of stuff, um, socially, very liberal, socially, very, I'm okay with everything, oh my, um, but yes, um, and, and I had done a video that they didn't notice, nobody, nobody watched it, I had done a video in response to a Jesse Gender video, sticking up for Jesse Gender, the trans lady, on the internet, and among, among other things, she wasn't the only person posting a video, there were other people posting a video about this, angry, there was some angry white ringer guy going on, I took it down when I got back home, because I figured, it's just going to get the ire of the right wingers, they're going to be bad, and, and, and why, why bring that noise, you know? I heard these guys. Um, they're going to find it. And it's just, yeah, it's going to be there. It's, it's sort of like the posting of the Channel Awesome movie. I said, like, yeah, the Channel Awesome, change the channel movie. The remake that I did. Um, the, the remake, which fixed it. Uh, took some stuff out, so it wasn't all there. Um, but yeah, um, I won't remake this other one. It's, it doesn't matter. The, the right wingers know they're punching down. It, it, it me and me. Uh, I have one sibling, a half sister, Moni. She's uh, very liberal, and I talk to her about those kind of things. And I also discovered that Martha's, uh, my sister's best friend, Candy, is also well. I knew she was also liberal, <laughs> and she was not into that other stuff as well. Uh, I said, "Thank you for being the liberal." <laughs> but yes, um, but yes, uh, is as funny. Well. Um, now, Mark's cards are John. That was my best friend for like 35, 36 years. Um, he also is, is liberal. But I would say, that I would say uh, yeah, socially liberal, definitely left leaning. Uh, not, not, not a socialist, no. Capitalist. But uh, with, uh, with uh, tendencies towards, uh, what's that word? Social justice, yes. But, yeah, that's the word. Social justice. Um, yeah, that, that early buzzword from like five years ago, they now call woke, which they get wrong. It's funny though that how the right wingers are so butthurt whenever they're called on their shit, which is it's fun. Well, <laughs> you're like, oh, you're living in a cult, or they're like, no, it's not a cult. If you're that adamant about it not being a cult, it's a cult. Uh, <laughs> that's what I that's what I find. Also, I find that. Uh, as I get slightly older, I can kind of fake it and break it uh, with uh, social interaction. I can at least make it look like I'm not completely socially awkward and introvert. Um, <laughs> um, it helps to have been uh, uh, doing church-related activities for years. Uh, 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 yeah, uh, yeah, Sunday school and stuff like that. It's weird because I do like not raunchy comedy sketches and stuff and, and they don't get to see that i block that but but i do though um <laughs> but but usually my stuff is tame usually my youtube stuff is is not raunchy <laughs> yeah um so yeah this is sort of a year review thing really going on about like you know things that are goofy um yeah uh only because the channel is not uh, the last couple of videos on On Location Cats, the channel has not even had any views, so the last couple ones that are on there. Notice, you notice that they reposted some of the Halloween videos uh, in the Halloween era, during the Halloween time, because uh, during, the, during the strike. Uh, because, because they were uh, uh, C3 Studios, the church group studios, found them and said, and, and, uh, and, and it, uh, so much is advised Okay, if there's any footage, even if there's kids in the very, very background and they're blurry, just take that part out. Just, just in case, you know. Uh, yeah, I know I re they realized that it was all in fun and that I was mainly the main focus of the videos when I went to the slideshows. But they wanted to make sure that there was nothing, nothing that could be misinterpreted. So I went back and edited out all the slideshows so they do not include any of the C3 studios, church studios, uh, slideshows at all however there's another channel uh, that um however this year before the uh before the uh just a little bit before this year it was actually last year right a year ago um there was a there was also an impetus on finally releasing the entire brown productions library 
videos, including the old ones and all the new ones and everything. Putting them out on YouTube, on the YouTube channel. The last great thing that that mom did was, <laughs> before she went dingy uh, was to okay with uh, several uh, family discussions with nephews and nieces and, and uh, sister and all that stuff. How would we post that? What would we do with that? What we, you know, would you put that out and uh, and and it was decided from one side of the family saying like, well, well, even if the even if the the older stuff is in there with, with ex husbands or whatever from years ago or whatever, it doesn't matter at this point. Uh, there were many there were many um, talks and discussions and things. But uh, it was decided that we would make a channel, a YouTube channel, and uh, I would post uh, some of the stuff on there. And then I would post, and then eventually all of the stuff on there. Eric and Dan were like, post all of it on there. Who cares what some of them think? Post it all on there because it's history. It's history. So it's family history. And, and another reason to post all of that on there, I think I talked about this last year too. <laughs> Uh, well, what's the post on there on, on the Brown Productions video channel is then you don't need to make copies for anybody because you kind of can't. You have physical me you, physical media technically doesn't exist anymore. These are going to be uh, flash video MP4s and put up on the YouTube channel. So they know the YouTube channel exists. They know the other channels exist. Uh, it all started with uh, like it all started in 2019 with Yvonne having passed and uh, that. Uh, that we want to get Brown Productions rolling again because it was a video thing we put out and do that again and have that rolling again. It wasn't until 2022, 2023 that that was rolling again. So we have that, and uh, yeah, so it's it's um so we let them let them put that out. And uh, the, over the past year, uh, the Kitty Key Cat was the channel. I think I mentioned it last year was was the uh, was uh, the uh, the formerly the channel where. The uh, one of the Kitty Keys, I think the first one, technically the first Kitty Keys channel, uh, was uh, that channel was co-opted as Brown Brown Radio Productions for Brown Videos uh, because he was no longer posting about Junk Swan Academy and COL, so he wasn't doing that anymore. And here, here, here you go, here have have my channel. I don't want it anymore. So we're like, oh cool, I'll use that one. Okay, well I'll use that one, and um. So we took it over, and Silly Kelly quote, took it over, um, and uh, and uh, he had to. Uh, of course, some of the other stuff, some of the some of the some of the naughty cow cat channels had to be moved over to the other Silly Kelly channel, so that it was Silly Kelly just a stage name, cow cat. Uh, so that so that it, and put in uh, eighteen restricted old names. That's in the other channel, not in the brown videos. It's on the other one. And so that's the case. Um, but the Brown Press video channel has been quite successful. Um, t there were, there were, uh, the only objections were weird objections. Like back in the day, uh, some of the relatives and some of the relatives' friends, and whatever, cousins, uh, objected to the idea that, oh, the, uh, my uh, ex-stepfather is a jerk. I want to see him on, on the video. Or, or, um, or something like that. Or, or, or. My ex-husband will see the video and figure out where, where we are. No, no, they won't. A video from 20 years ago. No, no, they're not going to care. A video from seven years ago. They aren't going to care. How are they going to know? They don't know what Calcat Cat is. It's a Kitty Key channel. It's, it, it has an even extra layer of confrontation because it's not Cal Cat. It's Kitty Key. They're really not going to know. It's, 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 it's various exers and cousins and whatever come along. They're going to be like, okay, uh... Brown has posted on this Kitty Key guy's channel, and he let him post there, and he's like, oh, okay, I'm never going to know who, where that is located, or who's doing that, so, I don't know. <laughs> They're not going to know who this Kitty Key is. <laughs> They're going to have no idea, and, uh, yeah, so, it's fine. It's perfectly fine, and we have, um, and nothing has happened. There's no, any contact, because, again, this Kitty Key does not have any social media, either. So they're like, oh yeah, we don't, we don't post Facebook, Instagram, or anything like that. So you'll never know. So these uh, exers, mainly ex-husbands, the ex-husbands will never know. The, the uh, and various relatives, they will never find 
out who that is. They will just say, oh, well, they, well they, now this is some of our old stuff. We can post it. Also, they released uh, on Amazon, I think it's called Scribe now. It used to be called Kindle, uh, the On Location Saga Journals um, over there. Of, uh, like Blessings to Her. And, uh, and the On Location Saga Journals. And, uh, and they are, uh, the names were changed to protect the innocent and the guilty. So all the names, last names were changed in the stories and the characters. So they're, they're fine. And, uh, yeah. So, but that's out there too. But all of the, uh, but the, the relatives have found some of those. And they're all, they were okay with those because what we've done with what Mark's cards and I did with those is any time that there was a holiday portion where, drama happened, I simply didn't include that particular journal. So you go through there and it like ends before the holidays in the in the drama. It doesn't actually show the drama at all. So it's not in there. So yeah. And also the one relative that was complaining about her kids being at Yvonne's funeral in the wake. One of the one of the nieces. <laughs> um, um, she's like, uh, but in the new version they aren't included. They're not on the end. And back in the day, in 2019, all she had to do was say that instead of chewing us all out. Said, she could have just said, nicely, she could have just said, all right, I don't, I don't want to have their faces on there. I'm not mad. Just just go back to the video and cut the last second out so there's not faces. That's all I had to say. I didn't have to make a big drama thing out of it. <laughs> and that other cousin, the uh, stepsister, step, what, 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 what is the lady of? Uh, stepsister, I guess. She also didn't need to worry about her ex-husband from 20 years ago, because I don't think he cares anymore, if he's alive. And, uh, so yeah, um, 30 years ago, or whatever it was. No, but yeah, uh, so that doesn't matter. So Brown Video Productions, long story short, is one of the highest, uh, uh, growing channels of the Calcat library, because people are going there and watching it. Not ex-husbands, though. They care. Yeah, I was like, I'm gonna go watch this video from 30 years ago of when you guys were kids running around. Oh, well, technically, does that break the copper act thing? Not a 30 year old video. No, it doesn't. <laughs> These people are like 40 now. <laughs> it's gonna break anything. Um, no, you can put up your home movies. I, I don't think Copra Act complains about that. Uh, yeah, your home movies are fine. It's just like current stuff. Yeah, which, which kind of goes with some of the internet consternations from later people on YouTube complaining uh, about current uh, modern art stuff. There was, there was a YouTube drama about somebody named Sniper Wolf, Snipe, Snipe, Sniper Wolf or something. <laughs> I don't know her at all, but she would like post reaction videos, two reaction videos, which is kind of lazy. And, and one of the comments on that other channel about that, that other video that had been deleted because we kind of didn't want the drama. Um, we don't want the drama about this either, because we're... But, but suffice it to say, if somebody is posting video of, uh, you, yeah, that breaks the rules of content, you can block them and <laughs> have them blocked, right? So, yeah, um, <laughs> that's all I was kind of saying. So, like, yeah. So, for instance, if you happen to have a TikTok that this other person used on their video, you could technically flag them and say, that's my TikTok video, and that's my kid in it. I'm flagging you. Ha! There, I'm blocking you. Yeah, so <laughs> that's all I was getting. If that is your kid, and don't pretend you're, you're not. That, no, don't do that. Um, anyways, um, and Brad Jones of Stone Gremlins has a kid now, so he's posting less as the uh, cinema stop. So, let's see what else. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, writer strike. Uh, there was a uh, there was a there was an actor uh, there was a writer strike followed by an actor strike this year. Uh, that was the biggest incident thing. I would say that two years ago sucked more, like 2020, 2021, 2022, in terms of. Uh, the world in general, the, the COVID thing, you know, all of that. You get flagged for that, for talking about COVID. Um, <laughs> um, 
Because there's a lot of anti-vaxxer people. We're not going to go into that. Um, but there was a strike. There was a red strike. And uh, two or three of the uh, connections from the church are actors. They're the Actors Guild or the, the Animation Guild or something. And they're like, yeah, we, we couldn't do the plays and things because... Even the plays, <laughs> because of the, the, the strike, right? Um, <laughs> that was fun. So, yeah, we had a strike going on. And, yeah, so... But uh, the Calcat show was able to do uh, three discrete, um, different um, series this year. Uh, late, late in the fall, during the strike, because we had written scripts earlier on in the year. And we're not sag after them, so we're not in the sag that thing uh, that expired a long time ago it didn't get renewed so <laughs> it worked um so uh we were able to do our stuff and occasionally there was somebody commenting the shield's on and it was like no we're not because we weren't sag after uh, <laughs> but but yeah um so yeah the, the, the writer strike went on for about five months six months at least six months that ended and then the actor strike which had started a little bit into that it went on until roughly what, uh, October or something like that, and then it was over. And it was finally over, and a lot of movies got moved ahead. Uh, Oscar season should technically suck this year, because really, what are they going to give an Oscar to? And then they just, just hand it to Oppenheimer and, and Killers of the Flower Moon and stuff like that. Because really, they, they've got nothing from just up to New Year's, and usually that's what they do. And despite what the John Campia show, one of the other show, blog shows says, which also does tech content kind of like ours, in that they have guys talking about movies but not showing any footage, they do the same thing. It's very similar. <laughs> We're very similar to the Campia show. They may say, oh, they're ripping us off. Ah, ripping us off. Actually, my, my show was out before his, but no. No, it's fine. Um, it's, it's a blog. It's a technique when you don't show the content. And you partly don't show the content because YouTube will flag it. I, I can't even show again trailers and do a review of a trailer. They will flag it immediately. And I don't have that many views. So clearly now they're, they're just really, really into me. Uh, and don't have a lot of subscribers. But we have a lot of videos. Over, man, we have over 1,100 videos on that one channel. And we have, all, and we have over 350 videos on this one. And uh, Brown Video Productions has 100 videos. Many of them family videos. And also, in collaboration with the C3 people, and the church people, we have, uh, we have uh, the Brown Productions channel this year released the Two Car Garage album, the whole, the whole thing. Because we, we, con we uh, came in contact with the former singer, frontman, head guy, James Kurtz. And of course, Scott Boyd. And the other ones. And, and some of the other, other fans. There's like, like, yeah, it's the two-car garage uh, uh, musical albums and stuff. They're not really available that much anymore, or at all. And who was producing those musical albums? Were they done by a studio, or were they done by the church? Who did them? Turns out, the church did them, so they're not a studio. They're C3. Well, they're technically the church studio, so they're LLC. Uh, if somebody posted them then on the Internet, on YouTube from 20 years ago, they would be considered 503, you'd be considered archival under the 503E license. You could post an LLC, you could say like, okay, this is archive, it's meant as a, a flashback thing, this band no longer exists, it closed down in 2002. Um, and if you post it, nothing will happen. So the Brown, Brown Video Productions is the only YouTube channel on YouTube that posts the uh, the Two Car Garage album, Two Car Garage, and Losing Control, album one and album two. There's only one song from Losing Control that we don't have, and it's just not posted. It's the other version of the, uh, <laughs> the praise song. That was on. The praise song is on there, but the other other uh, there's a third one on there that isn't there. But all the other ones are on there. Now we weren't allowed to do one of them, so we didn't post that. Hmm. So. <laughs> uh, hmm. Interestingly enough, when I did the video version of Blessings Deferred, Grandma Knapp's novel, I did a video version of it with the Star Trek character. I posted, I posted an ancient poem 
the, the change cross, and did, redid the lyrics, rejiggered them slightly so they would sound more like a, a song, poem thing, but it would change some of the lyrics so they matched, so it was lyrical, because it was just kind of a poem before, and it was, so it actually is closer to the 1930 version as opposed to the 1900 and something version, the 1870 version, it's closer to the 1930 version, and, and sung it, and, and put piano to it, and, Put a piano, the, the magnum opus that Grandma Knapp, piano, it's not a thing she kept remembering over and over again, and, and Dad tried to play over and over again. Um, I took out the da 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 because that was uh, a little bit more like uh, the garden, into the garden, and that wasn't the original beat. That that really wasn't, Dad was misremembering it as the into the garden, which into the garden is nice too, but it wasn't into the garden, it was the other one, it was the... Uh, <laughs> it was the other one, so, uh, so yeah, change cross. So that's in there. That's the beginning and end credits. That is that poem of that? That was a blessings deferred. It's connected to the Brown Press thing, but it's actually aired on the on the Parodies channel because it used Star Trek figures dressed up as as 1920s figures. <laughs> but yes, uh, it's a three hour epic audiobook, sort of an audiobook with video, so it's sort of a motion comic is what it is to watch. There's not much action going on, you're just listening to the, to the dulcet tones of Clint Cowpoke doing all of the voices and, and didn't even pitch bend it that much because I figured, oh, it's just Clint Cowpoke reading this, so it's fine. I, I didn't want to, yeah, I wanted to get it all done and out for the, for the uh, December 15th uh, pseudo Christmas episode. Thing that we didn't actually film. All we have is is uh, footage from from a hotel room. Uh, it's boring of me just uh, drinking soda and getting silly. It, it's not even fun. I have the footage. It's just not fun. Um, <laughs> so it's not even cool. Um, but yeah, the other things we did during the uh, the uh, the hiatus uh, were uh, uh, Robotech meets the Transformers. We finally did that. Finally got that out. We mentioned it last year. Because we were writing the scripts back then. And, uh, yeah. And we filmed it. We filmed it in... Um, when did we film that? It was like October? September, October? Something around? Yeah, October. 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 Um, it was late... I know it was late August. August, September. I think it was officially... Yeah. It's around there. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, it, needless to say, uh, the... We were able to do a church play. Uh, we were in, you know, you'll, you can see Calcat in the Christmas Post 2023 at C3 Studios online if you want to. You can see me walking around in there, and apparently they really liked my performance. So, get to see that. And I'm wearing a black hat and, and an old timey jacket, and I'm walking around in there doing some Pratt Falls and things. It's kind of fun. Um, so, go watch that. So, there was, there was, uh, we got to do the stuff. and. Acting alongside a former two-car garage uh, guy, uh, Scott, so he's in there. Who is SAG after? Do it because it's the right kid. <laughs> so yes, um, and other people. Um, yeah, so so cool. They get to they get to do car stuff. Uh, yeah. Also, kind of a cool thing about other Christmas song uh, Christian songs was. Uh, remind, was reminded of the Mountains of Mercy, uh, look at, going up to the Mountains of Mercy song, and and uh, reminded of it during the play and mentioned it to Todd, uh, to Todd uh, the director. He said, oh yeah, that's a good one. She's done for like Easter or something. And 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 I looked it up. It was five uh, five cents the richer, five pence the richer or something. It was a, it was the band, and also that uh, yeah, um, apparently. When the Mexico mission trip guys, that's where I first heard it, was the Mexico mission trip in 1999. That band was brand new. So we heard one of their first concerts of that song. That, that's kind of cool. Back in 1999. So we were, yeah, on the retreat. And there it was. That's awesome. <laughs> so yeah, yeah I, I commented on their website. Said, I remember this from Mexico 1999. And they're... And they responded and said, wow, that was one of the first times we did it. Ooh, that's cool. <laughs> you got to see that. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, wow. Wow, okay. 
That's awesome. Um, but yes, um, <laughs> the first time they went down to Mexico. <laughs> so yeah, um, yeah. So I didn't know them, but at the time we we met them. Yeah, yeah, they were they they would later become famous. So <laughs> that's cool. But yes, um, so so let's see what uh. Uh, oh yeah, there's another weird famous thing. Uh, unofficial, the band that was occasionally on the shirt. Uh, unofficial went on to become Spider Monkey, the uh, band Spider Monkey. So so when you look up their songs, it, it goes into the you know, kind of, so Spider Monkey. They're a band. <laughs> but yeah, uh, of course at that point Dan was no longer in it, but they became Spider Monkey. Uh, <laughs> But yes, um, that's kind of cool. Another band, so band stuff. So I also did, uh, yeah, Robotech meets the Transformers. So because uh, Armid Arkama died in 2022, the, the, the last holdout of the Robotech people, who was keeping for some reason that copyright for over 35 years, didn't want to let anybody from Japan do Studio New do their thing, and release their stuff here. Wanted to keep it all to himself, he died. So I said, all right, lift the copyright off, let him have it. <laughs> and that's why now in 2023, 2022, 2023, you can go online on YouTube and watch all of Robotech, all the way up to Robotech the movie, which uh, was that obscure movie. Somebody, somebody rendered a 2022 version of that, fixed it up. It's still a terrible combination of, you know, Robotech and Mega Zone two three, but but it is it is yeah. But they the remasters remastered, <laughs> but yes. Um, but my version, my our, our idea, our fan film Robotech meets the Transformers. Our idea was that uh, over here was that I was gonna do those Sentinel. I had done the end of the circle. I had adapted one of the books already. The end of the circle was endless circle. In 2015, I believe that was, uh, Rick Hunter gets home, and then the action adventure goes from there, and they go on this adventure eight years ago. And, did that. <laughs> and then there's and then there's Space Bridge and the Bioship Mysteries, and then there's and then there's the later ones, and the, yeah, the later ones. But that sets up a new timeline because technically they have a, have the uh, Shadow Children one and two, where they go back to 2018, and they encounter the Transformers. From a slightly other universe that have done things, and that's the universe where the Sentinels one picks off, where this Robotech meets the Sentinel, because in Bioship Space Bridge, and you don't need to know all that at all. It's it, it's self-contained. You can watch the Sentinels. Robotech meets the Transformers. It's not really Transformers meets Robotech. It's Robotech meets the Transformers. You can watch it, and not have seen those other stories. But most likely, if you're on my video channel, you have seen all of them, and you want to see more, so you can see more. Um, so what we got to do is uh, that Sentinel show. They tried to promise all of us Robotech fans in 1987, and never got around to it. Just one episode, one 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 hour episode. We we did, this story starts kind of right after that, right after that one episode is over, and then they go on to launch the SDF three and go go to. Planet Tyrol, an orbit of Phantoma in the Valvary system. Then, then, and then spend three hours of awesomeness of Robotech meets the Transformers with the with the Sentinel Autobots and the and the, uh, and the uh, who are Sentinels, but they're Sentinels slash Masters. And then there's the Invid, who are the Decepticons, of course. The yeah, and um, and they meet the Robotech people because because in Space Bridge. They go to 2015 and 2016, and they say, well, it's 2016 now. Let's go find Rick Hunter. But it would be Rick Hunter from that timeline. So they go and find Rick Hunter. And, yeah, it's a different, it's a, a Rick Hunter that's never lived through the Robotech Wars because it happened. Uh, yeah, yeah. And then that was later addressed in all Transformers Mush and, and Stranded on Macross and, and, and uh, Serial Hallucinations, two episodes of that, that finale thing. Was addressed in there too, because then it was during the pandemic, the uh, the the COVID, and which affected all of the Transformers and the Starship Locations universe. <laughs> so the pandemic was going on in the background, and uh, 
because we're all indoors, there's nothing else to do, so I was filming lots of fan films. I've done prolifically done so many fan films on that other channel. That other channel's not going anywhere. I don't know we're going to do more eventually. <laughs> we're definitely doing more. Uh, uh, yeah, Martha's uh, friend Candy, uh, the, the, the Candy, the classic Candy. Uh, she's, uh, she, uh, she says, oh, the Wi-Fi is great up here. Yeah, we can do that up here. We can, we can do that, fan films. <laughs> so, well, I hope so, because we're doing them up there. Um, maybe, maybe she's not in it, but <laughs> anyway. <laughs> but yeah. So yeah. Um, yeah. So the Robotech meets the Transformers. They they go to this planet, and and we had three uh, three mini series scripts, basically uh, taken from all Transformers mush and. Lexicons, Lexicons was last year. Uh, the, the Lexicons is the uh, sequel to Mush. It's literally the follow-up archive to Mush. It even has some of the old Mush stuff in it. A multi-user shared hallucination. Thus, shared hallucinations. Or, or, yeah, that's what they call it. Transformers Mush. And we got to see that. And we got to do that. It was awesome. And uh, so, so, yeah, they, 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 they spend... Basically, an adaptation of the first Robotech the Sentinels book, uh, but done in the guise of a Transformer story with similar. It's it's not an adaptation of the book in that it doesn't have any dialogue from the book. It's all dialogue from Transformer stories that kind of sounded like it and were rewritten as as it. See, they were rewritten to fit the book. They weren't really, but they were fit. Yeah, yeah, close enough that you would say, "Oh, yeah, yeah, it's." An adaptation of the Jack McKinney novels. That's awesome. We get to do the Sentinels, and then they and then they ask, "Did you do? Did you go to Hadon? Then that's the next big planet, and Spherus and all that." Well, we didn't go to Spherus. We didn't go to Praxis, but we went to Hadon because Hadon's important to the Shadow Chronicles and all that later. Even though that's a slightly different time, so it's all good. So, so after the three hours with Tyrol, they leave Tyrol and they go on to Hadon in the second half, in uh, part three, part two. Part two is the middle, darker chapter. The Regent and the Regis arguing together and all that stuff. Go to this other, other planet, Hadon 4, Sensor Nebula. And they actually fix the Sensor Nebula thing so it makes more sense. Because in the, in the uh, well, I know that in the Japanese version, the in bit were different and they were doing something else. And they just, American dubbed over the Nebula thing and made it sound more prescient. But I, I went back to the Japanese one. In, in form and said like, okay, it's not really a nebula in space because there aren't very ne in many nebulas that close to where they were in the Southern Cross. So, so it's not, it's not a nebula. They just call it that. It's a sensor array. So when she says a sensor nebula array, then you're like, oh, it's something in the Hadon system that they've, that she's activating. See, that's how you do it. You don't, you don't over-explain stuff. Like in, like, in, uh, <laughs> like in the Rebel Moon movie, you know, or, or in the Aquaman the sequel, where they were over-explaining the, the evil trident, or the Rebel Moon one, over-explaining the, the motivation of the, the Rebel Lady. Uh, you don't do that in a movie. You don't need to over-explain it. You just go there. You just say, okay, the... Yeah, you, you don't need a long exposition. If you need to ex have a million backstories to make... Uh, actually, in the Marvels as well. You didn't need all of the extra um, body swapping. It was more like teleporting than body swapping, really. They were, they were literally teleporting to another place. It wasn't body swapping. It was literally teleporting. But I guess they just loved Wonder Woman 84, which sucked. But, but they didn't need that. They could have just said, we're here, we're going to go to the station now. We're go to the station. That would have been much cleaner a story if they'd done that. They said, all right, we, we left the girl's house, we're going to go over to the station. That's all they need. It would have been so much simpler. It's like, why, why, did, why all the, the extra stuff? Just go to the, get the Marvel lady and go to the house. And then go to the space station on a ship. Yeah, you just needed to get from point A to point B, and chinsed out and said, oh yeah, they teleport now. You didn't have to do that. No. Spaceship. 
you know, it's, it's, it's got to make sense. So, sensor nebula. Yeah. I have the sensor nebula in orbit of the planet, and I'm going to activate it. There. Good. Works. <laughs> or, or, like, the, there were parts where the... Yeah. There were parts where, like, the, the Decepticon Indians and stuff, and the, it's a Ritter character that keeps appearing from, from the mush. From, <laughs> and it keeps... There's characters that, like, you know, look at the screen and say, like, uh, break the fourth wall a little and say, like, Oh, he's just evil, you know? <laughs> Stuff like that. And it's like, <laughs> he's just evil. Um, yeah, so. Or have some of them shocked that they get betrayed and, and like, by the other Decepticon Robotech person and have them go like, why did you do that? He's like, oh, I'm a Decepticon. That's funny. That's all you need. You don't need to over-explain that. He's like, Okay, everybody gets that. He's a Decepticon. He's, he's going to do something mean. Of course he's going to stab you. Wow. <laughs> Blast you over. He's a Decepticon. <laughs> It'd be funny if an Autobot did it. But, but yeah, then it would be funny. Um, so in the third story, they're all three-hour segments. The third three-hour segment takes us to Optera. Homeworld of the Invent. The final battle. Ah. And thrown in there is this big dramatic tale of young Dana Sterling getting captured and they have to rescue her from the evil Laszlo Zand. That's out of the books, too, by the way. Um, yeah, so the Jack McKinney books, uh, fans of those books would say that, oh, this is a great adaptation of those books. It's awesome. They do such a good job. It's amazing. So the other one, <laughs> it's awesome. I like it. Um, yeah, so, so we have... Uh, then we jumped on to the Star Trek stuff we did. We did uh, we did Starship Locations Destinations, the final season, the fifth of the final mission of the, of the Starship, fifth and final year. They're trying to get uh, Tam and Lucarno to, uh, Tam and Castro to, characters, to the Academy. <laughs> and, uh, and they just keep stopping at different planets. And the last New Year's we talked about uh, talked about uh, how that would be, how that might work, how that, you know. Uh, mainly talked about the Tarantino one. <laughs> That's in there. It's called Behind the Eight Ball. It's an episode. Um, uh, Quentin did not give us permission. However, we riffed on, uh, <laughs> it was a Pulp Fiction story, basically, done with space, space aliens. And there, again, we, uh, we uh, uh, show don't tell kind of thing. There again, we we, we we did a little show just because we tell because we wanted to make fun of Pulp Fiction a little bit, make fun of it, and about uh, Tarantino's own neck for feet. He likes feet uh, as well, so there's foot jokes in there. Uh, so we have like um, so we have um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so yeah, and Rumbly's in there, but yeah. <laughs> but uh but yeah um uh, so so we have uh yeah so so we have a scene in there where where it was one of the chief consternations of pulp fiction it was a bible verse that he literally gets wrong he gets the wrong verse it's in the movie saying it's it's ecclesiastes when it's ezekiel and then it's ezekiel when it's ecclesiastes it's screwed up yeah he got the wrong verse <laughs> it's a little bit of psalms in there. Um, but there's another there's another verse where 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 they're talking about the Royale with cheese. It's a classic scene from the from the movie. Didn't do the watch with the at the butt. Didn't want that one. I think it briefly is mentioned that was a scene. We didn't want to include. Um but uh but yeah the Royale with cheese, you know. I have relatives that have been to England and friends and stuff and friends have been friends. And they never called it that there. And the in Pulp Fiction, the, the joke is the two mobsters in the car are kind of bullshitting each other. So they're, they're full of crap. And, and one of them is all like, like, oh yeah, because it's a metric system over there in England. They call a, a, a quarter pounder a royale of cheese because they wouldn't say pounds. And it's not true, but in the story, that's true. And they've never even, not even in their 30th anniversary of the movie, did they ever call it a royale of cheese. Even Burger King didn't call it a royal sheet. And you'd think Burger King would. It's a Burger King. Um, but no, no McDonald's. You, you go to the, 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 the Paris, France uh, thing and the, 
England website, it's a quarter pounder. It's called a quarter pounder in France. You can get a quarter pound of beef and eat a burger. That's what it is. So it was never changed. Um, and the characters in the show, the episode, make fun of that. Because apparently Jeremy Esther, who's in it, in the story, <laughs> it's a Picard figure. Uh, I think it's a young Riker figure. And, he, and he's like, and they ask him, they say, like, you're from France, Jeremy Esther. Ah, what, what do you say they call it? He's like, I wouldn't know that. I'm from space. And then he goes, but yes, yes, I know. It's not called that. And then Tendi from Lord X is there because she's there too. But she's in her 50s now in the, in the timeline. And she goes, yeah, I happen to know it's, it's even, even in space. It's, it's not called that. Space of uh, France. <laughs> space colony in New Europe. It's not even called that. Um, well, yeah, there's jokes like that in there that are, that are, that are fun. Um, a couple of other ones. We did a, a, a two-part uh, Marshall Sportiest Jung Swanee parody one as well. Um, although the, uh, the, the randier one is actually the one with uh, Holy Cat and Rumbly, who it seemed to be playing off uh, uh, me and, uh, a little bit, me and uh, the, this girl from the church years ago, like before the pandemic. Who, who uh, Amanda wanted to be on the show, and she was all like, "Yeah, I want to." Do it. And and then not, and then we went on into the uh, pandemic, and that happened. So it never happened. Would have dated her again, but it didn't happen. And uh, <laughs> we never really got back together. I mean, we appeared once or twice. There was a funeral for this old couple, uh, this old this uh, lady, the web lady that uh, died. Uh, a couple of months ago, and I showed up at that. She showed up at that, and then and then some of the cast realized, oh, that was the girl that you were talking about. So like, yeah, who do you think it was? <laughs> it's Amanda. But yeah, um, but but yeah, not so much anymore. She moved to Oakley. Anyway, so uh, I mean, she's still around, I guess. She, you know, wanted to be in the show, but she was not in this episode. She might be a little affronted by this episode. She might say, wait a minute, I didn't... Yeah, but as long as we're Q in the story, that's fine. But then there's this other girl from about earlier that shows up as this other character in the Marshall Sportia story. She's a, somebody from way back, and she shows up in it. And we figured she would get affronted, so, so, the, so the actual scene filmed with her and, and the, the cow cat archetype it's filmed a little differently and more tastefully so that it's not, nothing happens at all. Um, <laughs> it doesn't become a slash story, let's say. Yeah, everything's cool. Nothing, nothing becomes slashy in that one. Um, that was fun, too. They, 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 that family that that's based on has nothing to do with the story. They weren't involved. So, but yeah, then there was this other story... I was going to follow the uh, the destinations called uh, Distant... We are going to do the Distant Destinies novel. Wrote a, wrote a script. And ended up saying, like, we're not ever going to make this as a Distant Destiny. It's not going to get done. It's not a time crunch because of all the... the because Robotech meets the Transformers, the Starship Destinations, and later Blessings Deferred, which we're going to make right after that. All of those. They're all going to be Queen Bee Studios because on location cats no longer exist. They're all going to be Queen Bee Studios, so they're all labeled that. Um, also because to avoid the writer's strike people complaining. because They can't if it doesn't exist. Queen Bee Studios, right. Um, <laughs> um, but, but yes, uh, so the Distant Destiny's thing. I uh, wanted to write a story that was... Uh, Sort of the Endover saga again, basically. Went with them on a ship and a generation vessel, and they're playing like the, the thing. But it's a 90 minute movie finale thing. Uh, pilot. They ended up, okay, it wasn't a good pilot. And it was kind of like at the end of the Destiny thing, it was similar to back in the day when we were doing all Transformers Mush, and we were doing some of those Starscream saga stories from the Mush, and got a comment, happened to get a comment in there. From one of the uh, one of the writers, who was noticing we were doing an adaptation of one of their stories, and she was all like, "Why don't you do my other one? It's cool too." And so we looked up the other one. And we're all, 
Oh, she, oh, she did like, wow, she did like three or four of these. All right, well, we'll I'll adapt the other one. We ended up doing all seven of them, really, um, but, but because they were short. So it's like, okay, there was Starscream Commander and then the Starscream Commander 7. They were labeled that way because 1 through 3 was verse 1 and 7 was 4 through 7. So they're all there. Um, those two, they're all there. Um, those were the, the Wrath Planet stories. I ended up being part of it. Never met this person. It's really fun. Um, but yeah, it's awesome that they comment. It's also awesome that Rob Powers eventually commented on his, back in the day, his story. That, uh, and also that uh, characters like Doug Muth also commented. Only to say that, oh, by the way, uh, uh, the, the Rob Jung and Doug Muth, with, I'm the same guy. <laughs> this is my stage name, like your Cal Cat, Adam, basically. Oh, oh shoot, okay. Uh, yeah, so, all right. Um, but yeah, uh, so that was cool, but other than that. Also, what was interesting is, is uh, uh, yeah, there was some of the commentary on the Adamicons and from last, from this year. I think it was, yeah, this year, earlier in the year, when uh, we're going to go to Fanime, when Mark's cards and Cal Cat go to Fanime. And uh, David Gerald's going to be there, and there's going to be other stuff. So, oh, cool, David Gerald, yeah. That's where we got the permission for uh, Peppermint and the appearance of doing the, the third season. We weren't going to do the third season originally. We're just going to do parts of it. We're going to maybe do the Tarantino thing. We're maybe going to do the Marshall of Sportiest, the Jung Swan one. We're almost going to cut the Marshall of Jung Swan one out. But because we have the Mirror Universe one right afterward, where they go to the Flodite planet, we're all, you know, we kind of have to include it. So we ended up filming it. So we ended up including it. We said, heck with it. Let's just film the Bullshito thing. But also because they closed the Bullshito thread down. We had to, we, this would be our only version of that ever. So we have to, we have to do it. We have to show it. To put it out there live so they can all see it. You know. So, so, so we did. Uh, Bullshito thread. There are some other archives that are still out there that have pieces of the thread. Yeah, but, uh, but yeah, the main one, the 4,000 page one is gone. So yeah, we absolutely had to do it in the end, and we ended up filming it. It was great. It was awesome. Um, you know, in terms of a fan thing. So so yeah, we, we, so we went to Fanime, and uh, well, we knew we were going to go to Fanime, and knew some of the guests and, and appearances and stuff like that. And uh, and Rakshi Raksha, the inspiration of the Raksha character, and of course Night Racer. And all of the 1994 BotCon lady, who showed up once or twice in other things before. At some of the other things, I think one of the Baycons and stuff was also there. Uh, so she was actually a semi-local. And we, we got word of mouth. Because you can still look around on, on, these, on these blogs and sites and stuff. TFCon and stuff. And, and yeah, and they said, you know, uh, they were talking about her again. Because... They were doing that the uh, Rise of the Beasts, the Transformers Rise of the Beast thing. I think that's this year too, and it's not on the list. Yeah, it's not on the list for Best Picture because it isn't Best Picture. Uh, it's one of the it's one of the better Transformer adaptations live action, only because it's copying the mush. But uh, but yeah, it, it's it's in there as a honorable mention kind of thing. But but the Rakshi Raksha thing is kind of a weird lady who collects snakes. Uh, she likes snakes. She likes Decepticons and snakes. Turns out she's gonna be at Fanime, twenty twenty three, <gasps> and and we knew. So so we had like we had like a <laughs> so we had like a thing and a, a little announcement thing saying, oh, let's talk about Raksha over here. And we're not gonna tell you what what we know about Raksha. We're gonna tell you about she's back in the news. Raksha, and then nonchalantly at Fanime. Because uh, I wasn't sure whether I was going to see her there. See her. Nonchalantly in front of me, we walk up to the, the snake lady. There she is. The, the, the botcon girl. The, there she is with her friend. <laughs> and, her, and her snake handler. That's awesome. And, and uh, John, uh, Mark's cards talked to the snake handler guy and made some, we did some wise cracks. And, and, uh, and in the video, when you see the video of the botcon and the, and the slides and things, I don't get a shot of her, but I get a shot of her friend and a shot of her hand holding a snake. Just her hand. Just, ah, I'll, I'll pose the snake. I don't want me in the shot. It's the snake. <laughs> okay. 
that's uh, Night Racer right there. So that was awesome. Let's see Night Racer. She's a little kooky, but that's okay. Well, <laughs> but yes, um, Night Racer. Snake was not called Night Racer. <laughs> but yes, um, Snake Handler. I made a uh, wise crack about the snake biting them. The snake's like John's old. Mark Scott's old. The snake's not gonna bite him. He knows what he's doing. <laughs> but yes, um, so yeah. I also did that bizarre dance out in the front that people commented was the Barbie dance for. It's on one of the local things, you know. Uh, <laughs> the, the, the cha cha cha. And they did that in the Barbie movie. And they went and said, oh, how did he know that? Oh, I was, uh, well, it was in the, it was in the uh, commercial the, 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 for, the, for the movie. That's how. So that, that's not, yeah, that's obvious. <laughs> she went like this in the trailer. I went like this. Yeah, I've seen the trailer. I knew it was coming. <laughs> it's, yeah, that's all. No, it's not a big deal. I'm not a mandala. Although there is a weird mandala effect. I have a mandala effect. I didn't think I would ever have one. Because usually, you know, the Berenstein bears and the Berenstein bears and all that stuff. And, yeah, yeah, I knew that. Uh, <laughs> you know, stuff like that. But I had a mandala effect just recently. Didn't think I would have one. Great America. I just recently watched the video on Six Flags having gone bankrupt again. It went bankrupt twice. So I'm remembering back to about 23 years ago at the Dave & Buster's. Somebody commenting on, on Great America being a Six Flags attraction. And he's like, no, it's not. It's California's Great America. It's never a Six Flags attraction. So you're fair or somebody runs it. Uh, not realizing that that person was actually right. At the time, I could have sworn... It was Cedar Fair and someone else. After it was Marriott. Remember Marriott had it and they had the WB characters. And they, this person was from like the Midwest. And she thought it was a Midwestern Great America. The one in the Midwest is a Six Flags attraction. I think she had them mixed up. You know. Yeah. Um, but apparently it's convoluted. Apparently um, uh, according to the, to, the, to the Bright Sun Films thing. Bankrupt Films thing. Oh, uh, uh, it's convoluted because apparently, uh, yeah, the, the Six Flags started out in Texas, the Six Flags over Texas, then went to Pennsylvania, and then the Midwest, and then back to the West Coast. They kept buying out other all the former amusement parks and refurbishing them, just like Cedar Fair did later. And even though Marriott's Great America from when I was a kid, uh, that's the local one in Santa Clara. It's now by the uh, impossible to get to. Levi Stadium, where the 49ers play. <laughs> and you can't get in there when there's a game playing. Or, or a soccer game with earthquakes, either. You can't get in there. Well, you can't go there. It's closed off. For you. Just can't. Um, so you have, yeah, it's Marriott's Great American when I was a kid. And they had the Looney Tunes characters when I was a kid and stuff like that. And then when when Dan was a kid, they, they, they gravitated out of that toward more generally universal stuff. Uh, by the time Philip and Sarah were kids, it was a Nickelodeon stuff. And that's where the Nickelodeon Devil Dare, Family Dare was. They had a, they had a show there. Yeah. Uh, in the 90s. They had the, um, <clears throat> so yeah, yeah, young, young Dan. And, so they were Nickelodeon there for a long time. And then back and forth, and they would sometimes rent out W characters. So it was very convoluted and confusing. I always thought at that point it was called California Great America. It was called Paramount's Great America in the 2000s for a while, too. And then it was California's Great America. This is what it is now. So I assumed because it was never called Six Flags Great America, from what I recall, it was never called that. No, the Midwestern one is. No, here in California it's not. That, that it was not of Six Flags attraction. But apparently uh, it was... <laughs> uh, yeah, um, so what happened is that in the 90s when it was Nickelodeon slash Paramount's Great America and then was sold off to Cedar Fair, Cedar Fair at that point had bought Six Flags. So it was technically a Six Flags attraction, even though Six Flags Marine World was Marine World Africa USA over there. It was a Six Flags attraction as well. 
Even though it was not called that in name only in on the books because it was Cedar Fair. That Cedar Fair now owns it. And I think it's dead now. I think, it, I think the Great America is dead. Uh, but, but yeah, it was Six Flags, uh, Six Flags attraction. But what's weird is, according to, these, to the story, it technically should not have been a Six Flags attraction until 1998. And then only briefly. <laughs> until 2002 or three or something like that. So technically, it, it became not a Six Flags attraction after Dave and Buster's. <laughs> and then it kind of was bought up by this other company that bought up Cedar Fair and Six Flags and called it Six Flags again. So and then California's Great America is what it's called now. So it's a Mandela effect. Because they didn't actually physically call it that. <laughs> But yes, apparently it was. Yes. Um. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. So. Yeah. Well, politically, that that uh, Trump cult leader weirdo guy is trying to get back so he can be a he can be a dictator. Oh, uh, that ain't a good idea. Let him make it chodes. No, that ain't a good idea. Well, as soon as they can ban him in at least three or four large states, he can't run. <laughs> Dog can hunt, but he can't run. <laughs> ban him in some more states. Mm. That Greg Abbott, he sent a bunch of people up in a plane, uh, immigrants in a plane again. What they should do is send the immigrants back in the plane to his house. See what he does. Texas governor guy. It's got to be illegal to transport people that aren't in the country. That's technically human trafficking. They, they should just arrest him. They <laughs> should throw him out. <laughs> in Texas. That'd be funny. But no, they should send the immigrants back to his house and have them camp on his lawn. <laughs> That's what they should do. <laughs> just hang out on his lawn. And pee everywhere. On purpose. Maybe you poop. Mm. That'd be nasty. But yes, um, maybe they wouldn't do that. Oh my. But yes, um, yeah, so this is a uh, year in review. Not much to say, not much to do in a year in review. But yeah, I've been leaning back a lot this year. Here, but, but yeah, you can see me in the shot. I'm in there. Mm. Six Flags Attraction. Mm. Well, considering that I only went on like two or three roller coasters in that whole park while I was there. When I was younger, I was more ballsy, you know, going on. But I haven't been there in years, decades. Mm. And they did do a special on the Winchester Mystery House. Well, but, but that wasn't this year. Oh, the Simon Whistler guy did. Yeah, that's right. Simon Whistler of, of, of England did a thing in the Winchester Mystery House. In the Winchester story. Interesting story. You know, and I wasn't the only one that commented in the story. Uh, commented in his comments. I'm from that area and I've been to that many times. But I said, the time you want to go there is you want to go there on Halloween. Because they make it all creepy looking in there. That's cool. It's actually doubly creepy because it, that's weird. And I was saying that earlier about that about that really awful Latin Exorcist remake that came out this year. Uh, I was trying to say that story to, to Candy and Martha today, but they weren't hearing it. They didn't hear what I was saying. But uh, but it was a funny a funny witticism. It was it was quite funny, but they didn't get it because they weren't paying attention. Uh, the idea was okay. There was this bad Exorcist movie. I was making fun of it. I was trying to say, what I was trying to say is, you can't have a Latin Exorcist movie because it's like the movie Coco and stuff. And they have Day of the Dead. They have Dios de Muerta. So they would be prepared for something like that to happen. And it wouldn't happen. That's the joke. See, that's the joke. It's just funny. And so Mima would come out and she'd be like, Uh oh, the daughter is there. It's got the exorcising demon. Quickly get the candles and stuff and pray Hail Marys and it would just go away. 
Just be gone. <laughs> it's like, come on. Ah, there's a demon. Chase the demon away. Well, there's kind of a story like that when I told the story about the bully. Bully. Everyone back in the day. I did tell. So that's kind of the same idea. It's connected. So, but they didn't, they didn't get it. <laughs> but no, that, that's funny. If you think about, like, Coco. <laughs> Which I'm sure they've seen. <laughs> but yes, um, mm, they were paying attention. She kept me doing so. I was trying to explain about humor last time as well. Fortunately, ever since the uh, <laughs> uh, one unfortunate side effect of uh, of being uh, basically just hanging out here is, uh, is that uh, a hyper conservative right wing mumsy is. No longer listening to Fox News on the television 24-7, bla blaring in the background. And I don't hear, need to, I don't have to hear any more of that. And, and, and at that facility, they do not play the news. So they don't have the news on. If they do, they, they, they show pieces of it. Yeah, they, they do not show Fox there. They, they will not. It's too aggressive. You don't want those dementia patients going crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Try to escape. You don't want to show that stuff there. And what they really should do is have everybody that's got a dementia patient, like old oldster member that's uh, Smagger or something, they, they, all those families should sue Fox News out of existence. They really should just sue them because they're evil. They, they, they're, they're a cult. They need to be taken uh, to court. So, I'm not going to sue them, but they need to be taken to court. So, um, anyway, <laughs> I'm not going to do it. Um, but yeah, we haven't heard any of their lame-ass comedy show for several months. It's awesome that I haven't heard it. You know what else is kind of lame, though? The ridiculousness. The MTV show with the... With the it's a clip show, clip commentary show. It's kind of what Sniper Wolf's ripping off. It's, it really, um, yeah. Uh, some of that stuff is really, really fake. I was watching it in the hotel room last, uh, this morning. I was like, okay, yeah, there's some really, really fake stuff here. There's there's a guy that, like, I've seen the clip in other things. A guy jumps off the boat, and there's, like, Doc right there. It's like, that was staged. Or the guy falls through the wall, and the door's right there, and he pops down the ground. You know, there's, like, a thing there for him to land on. And like, come on. It's fake. Some of it's real, like the car driving off by itself. No, it's now back in the day, <clears throat> Cal. Now back in the day, you know Tosh Point oh. Tosh Point oh. would would and ridiculousness would just play any clips. You couldn't send clips in, but they would play clips that had become popular. And some of my cow cat cat videos were taken by other people and made a little more popular, so that people noticed them. Uh, the uh, let's see if I. Which one was on which? Okay, uh, the Katy Perry parody Roar. The one with Meow, 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 Meow. That one appeared on Tosh, and he said he's either really autistic or on drugs. <laughs> this was funny. <laughs> um, uh, but but um, Ridiculousness, the other one, the, the Love You Be Madonna cat one. And, and he was like, and he was um, back in the day, and he was uh, on Ridiculousness. And he was like, okay, you got the name of the song wrong. It's, it's L-U-V Madonna. It's not Abracadabra. And they're like, uh, uh, and they made some dumb lame joke. But the, that was the joke that the cat was, yeah, Abra, that's the name of the cat. That's the joke. It, it, it's really, really obvious. I'm surprised that they didn't use Kitty Kitty Kit Kit, which is truly a bizarre song. It's on a par with Nyan Cat. Well, the reason that Nyan Cat worked as a classic video is because it's a K-pop song is sped up real fast. Well, they do the K-pop song. But yes, it's funny how different things become viral on YouTube. Many people have talked about things that go viral on YouTube. And my stuff was bigger back then. Uh, dur during the heyday of the Cal Cat show in the seventh season, even though the review channel wasn't big yet, this one was, and and 
and I had a lot more subscribers. This channel has now currently 32 subscribers. The other channel has, the, the main one has uh, something like, I think it's like 300 or something. Really, really small subscribers. Even though I've got like uh, 50,000 video uh, views on that other channel and I've got like 1,200 videos, I think somewhere around that. And on this one, 300 and something. Uh, the videos and a couple thousand views. Uh, the Chimera channel now is more. Um, uh, well, this, uh, the Chimera channel has about 32 subscribers as well. And it also has uh, about 100 videos. Um, but, but yeah, the um, Brown Video Directions has more views. There's just a thousand of them there for 100 videos. Uh, the retention rate is weird. And, and, and there's no rhyme or reason to it. Near as I can figure is, is the ones that are real famous that have back before the algorithms were changed and made harder, um, they had, uh, they, they got sponsors and connections right away. So they would go out and say, like, I want uh, Sony to sponsor me or something. I want, uh, yeah, I want Disney or something. And Disney would then say, okay, we'll, we'll give you a certain amount of video views and subscribers, and, and then you sponsor us, and we put up our ads on your website. That's probably what they were doing originally, um, which is why you could get, like, a million views of a video that literally is just a guy reacting to another video that someone else put up. And, uh, yeah, it's completely ridiculous. It's like, how does this video get a million views? It isn't even interesting. I mean, it's not like some of the ones, that one that has a billion and a half views, that one, the, the, that weird Swedish, uh, what does the fox say video. <laughs> Which is funny, but, wow, a billion, oh my god. <laughs> wow. What does the fox say? Nah, 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 nah. Or man cat, which has really over a billion. Um, and then studios will put up their. Another way they do it is studios put up their own channels. Uh, there, there was it was the case for this one. Um, the other, there's a couple of them. There's two or three of the different families that have put up their family video that somehow they've done a clever video about COVID or something, and and it's like. It's like, okay, this video sucks, and your humor is really bad. So who are you? What, what were you from? Whatever. You look up, like, the about and whatever. You're trying to figure out, like, okay, this video is not fun. How did you get a million views? And you look it up, and it's like, oh, former child star such and such. It's like, well, there you go. Told by CBS or NBC or something. The former child star from, like, like eight, like well, eight is enough. <laughs> like, who's the boss or something. It's like, oh, well, of course, he's, yeah. It'd be like if Tony Dow showed up somewhere. John Schneider or someone like that. Although John Schneider, we don't really want to talk about him because Bo Duke, he just ain't right. He just ain't right. He in a cult. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He just ain't right. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, um... But yeah, there, there's some. Um, let's just say, right? Um, yeah, the, the yeah the problem with the Aquaman two movie was just it wasn't Amber Heard having six minutes of dialogue. That that wasn't a problem. The problem was we didn't want to see Aquaman's baby. We didn't care about that. Nor nor did we care about him breaking his brother out of jail and stuff. Even did, and then having him just like heal himself and getting in the water like immediately. Like what? Um, there's another problem with that movie was the Trident stuff, where they trying to explain the evil Trident. Show that in a show that in yeah. Do it. D make that the uh, sequence before the credits, where the evil brother and the good brother fight each other. Sort of just like uh, juxtaposition of Jason Momoa's character and his brother doing something. It's a juxtaposition. So you just show that you don't need to explain how the Trident gets in the hands of the other guy. She just finds it. And he finds it stupid. It's just lying there. The cracking things are attacking it. That's all that was guarding it. It's just sitting there on the ground. Grabs it. Yeah, how? Well, great hiding your uh, evil trident. <laughs> yeah, so. Evil trident. So. Mm. <clears throat> well.
So that's pretty much um, I got for this. Happy 2024 and yeah, say good night, Gracie. Good night, Gracie. And um, <laughs> uh, mm, so long, farewell, dear Chuppy Kins. Mm. All I want for Christmas is Q. Which is funny, which I do. <laughs> That's not me, though. Um, hmm. So, yeah, we used to have a lot more subscriptions than subscribers. I think in 2017, I thought we had at least a thousand subscribers back in the 2010s, 2016, 2017. But apparently not. Uh, also, after the copper thing of 2018, everybody lost like thousands of subscribers on all their channels. Because, because they, they cracked down on children in the spammers at the same time. And apparently there were a lot of little kids that weren't supposed to be on there that went to the channel. They're like, and the way I figure it, little kids, really little kids shouldn't really be on the internet at all. So that's a very conservative idea. No, they shouldn't be. Uh, TikTok and Twitter should say 18 years or older. 18, no. And if they did that, they would lose their demographic completely. But Instagram, 18. Because the only reason any adult men are going on Instagram, look at pictures, are pictures they shouldn't be looking at. There's no other reason to go there. And you don't want to do that. Yeah. So, yeah, don't let your kids go there. And it's and it's not set to eighteen years old or but but you know what I'm saying. Well, don't do that. Yeah. What's Pinterest? I guess is the old one. Yeah. So yeah, twenty twenty three. But bit don't don't bit the dust. Uh, yeah. This here's the final New Year's comedy sketch tape thing. Yeah. Totally figure out how to make another one. Um. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. Uh, yeah, so. Yeah. And we're not even going to show the ball drop. We're just going to stop here. <laughs> so, yeah, there's, there's, nothing, there's nothing more. There's just, uh, yeah, the channel ran into the ground. And, uh, yeah, this particular channel, the other ones will stay. Uh, and maybe on occasion something will come up here. Unofficially, that that season series finale, uh, but the official series finale was in 2015. It's already happened eight years ago. But yes, mm, then we moved over to the review channel. Mm, we've done lots of fan films and things that'll continue. Something will come up. Something will happen somewhere. Mm, not bad for a failed another failed child star. Yes. Mm. <laughs> that was fun. We did we did some other stuff too. Pro Steven special and, and key rhythms and stuff. <laughs> a bunch of weird stuff. Oh, and I think I'm still in the black belt testing promo video of 2001 on the on the internet. Yeah. It's still there. <laughs> you can go watch it. Jungle Swan Black Belt Testing 20, 2001. You can go watch it. See the cult. <laughs> yes. Oh, and, and we were in Roseville. We saw... Oh, yeah, we were in Roseville. We saw... We had this spaghetti factory there. There, It's like an old hotel before we go. It happened to be right next door to Lighthouse. Weird. Apparently they... It's one of their, one of their affiliates. Or something. <laughs> Great. <laughs> anyway, so that's the end. New Year's. Ah, do, do, do. That's all, folks.